Well, every week as we lead up to the federal election, we're breaking down a different party's platform to find out how they'll be affecting your family's budget. This morning, we're looking at the Green Party, who have been releasing their platform a little bit at a time. And joining us this morning to discuss more is Peter Sashaki from Everything Financial. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Carrie. How are you today? I am great. I know last week we were talking about the NDP's platform. This week we're talking about the Greens. And one of their promises is to abolish post-secondary tuition and forgive student debt that exceeds $10,000. I think a lot of people would find this very attractive. Um, how is this going to work? Well, who's going to pay for it is the big question with this one. If you're going to go abolish the debt, it still has to get paid. And what's going to happen when no one's paying for post-secondary education? Where are you going to get the skilled educators from? The people who work and, and work tirelessly in the universities and colleges. The other thing that will happen is you'll be you'll have a real drain on the workforce um and those people between 18 and 25 years old because people who maybe wouldn't think of going to school and let's face it there's been a lot of studies on this don't really need to go to post-secondary education for what they're going to do for a living will suddenly look at oh i can go to school and it's paid for and they won't enter the workforce as early and our economy depends on those people in that age bracket being in the workforce as we're seeing now with CERB. A lot of them not in the workforce and there's a shortage of jobs or people filling jobs out there in the hospitality industry. So that one's not one that's going to be a, a, a great idea and it's going to definitely be a drain on the economy. Yeah, and they have not given any specific way on, on how it will be paid nope. for, as you <laughs> mentioned. Um, they've also pledged to a guarantee livable income for all Canadians. So when I read, read on this, grabbed everything I could, as you said, they haven't released a lot of information, but kind of a minimum welfare for all. And here's the problem. The pie in the federal government of funds is only so big and you can only slice it up so many times. And the problem is there's people out there, as, as we know, who really need those checks in, in certain areas and people who depend on them who just can't get ahead. The problem is if you start giving more and more and more, the people who really need it will end up getting less and less and less, and that's a real problem. Yeah, there are some regions, uh, and I'm thinking of here in on, on the West Coast, that are very expensive to live, and that's right. There, people would find a livable income a very attractive um, part of the platform. It, it is, but there's people who who need there is people who need it more than others, and you, there's nothing wrong with social programs, but you still have to show how you're going to pay for it. And the big thing that's never shown, who are the people who are really negatively affected, who maybe depended on these social platforms and these, these social programs before, and now they can't really get it because other people are getting it. And we've seen that in a lot of other areas, and that's part of the problem. But just to stay fair, the Green did come out with another really good idea. Yeah, tell us about that. Um, you, just, um, they're planning to build and acquire at least 300,000 units of affordable co-op and non-profit housing over 10 years. And, and co-op and non-profit housing in certain areas, could you imagine co-op and non-profit housing for a lot of workers in Vancouver, who people who can't even get a house, who are living way out in the valley and doing a two-hour commute. Now, how are you going to pay for it? Now, of course, the Green Party wants everyone else to pay for it, but here's the thing. Let's give incentives to large corporations, have them pay for it. They can actually find a way to make this maybe not profitable, but they'll break even. And the tax incentives are what are going to help. Let's get private enterprise involved. I think it's a really good initiative. I mean, there is no platform on how to pay for it. But as I said, if we can get third party sources, private corporations to help with this, it would be great because you can have a lot of workers living close to where they actually do work, where they right now can't afford to work, they don't have to travel, and then you achieve another goal. You get a lot of cars off the road because you'll have a lot of just commuters walking, cycling to work. Yeah. If you can make it affordable enough for them to live close to where those works are. And I know a lot of people in a lot of industries who do co-op housing. It's great. Yeah, well, affordable housing will definitely be a big part of this federal election campaign. Um, next Absolutely. week, Peter, who are we talking about, the Liberals or the Conservatives? You, you know what? I was wondering on this one, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip a coin this week and decide. Okay. So no one thinks I'm playing favoritism, and I might even put it on Facebook because I don't want to see us playing favorites, and whoever goes last is someone's going to say I'm their favorite. So we're <laughs> going to flip a coin later this week and see. Okay. Peter Sushaki from Everything Financial. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day. You too.